Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving an equation with A plus BI. Yay, the name of the channel. So we have A plus BI to the third power equals one and we're gonna try to solve for A and B values. In other words, we're gonna find a complex number that satisfies this equation. And I'm sure most of you, maybe all of you, maybe some of you, who knows, are already familiar with this and they're like, they're going like, oh, this is way too easy, I can do this in 30 seconds. Doesn't matter, that's not the point. We're gonna be solving this problem in more than one way, okay? So already, let's start with the first method. So my for, for, for my first method, okay, I just couldn't say it. For my first method, I'm gonna go ahead and expand this. What is x plus y to the third power? By the binomial theorem, you probably know that it's x cubed plus three x squared y plus three x y squared plus y cubed. You could also write it in a little differently because that's something that I usually use uh, along with the uh, cubic formula, which is a more compact form and it kind of helps you with factoring and so on and so forth. So we can write it either way. I'm gonna go with the second one. So let's go ahead and expand a plus bi to the third power. Okay, x is this one and y is this one. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and expand it. Uh, x cubed or a cubed plus y cubed, that's gonna be b cubed, i cubed. First of all, I'm gonna write everything and then simplify next step. Three xy, this is x by the way, three abi, multiply by x plus y, which is the original expression inside the parentheses, which is a plus bi. This is a little better than the other one because you don't have to square it, but you have to cube. Doesn't matter, no big deal. Uh, you can do it either way. I like this better. That's just a personal preference. A cubed, now remember, I cubed, we've done quite a few problems on powers of i, right? You should hopefully remember, this is equal to negative i, because i squared equals negative one, remember? So this is negative i, that's gonna give us negative b cubed i. You can either put or not put the multiplication sign, and we're gonna distribute, that's gonna give us three a squared b i, and when we distribute this, we're gonna multiply i times i, which is i squared, which is gonna turn into a negative one, so I'm just gonna write it as negative three a b squared. Normally I would write plus three a b squared i squared, but i squared is negative one. Make sense? So, so this is equal to that. <laughs> so what is going on next? Next we're gonna go ahead and put the real parts together and let's write it as follows. a cubed minus three a b squared, that's the real part. And the imaginary part is three a squared b minus b cubed, that's gonna be multiplied by i, and that is equal to one. Awesome. This is a really nice equation because we have something quite complicated on the left-hand side, but something super duper simple on the right-hand side, which is nice. So these are two complex numbers that are equal, and we gotta find the a, b values, which means the real parts are equal. So the real part on the left-hand side is one, so this is supposed to equal one, and since there's no imaginary on the right, which means this is a real number, the imaginary part will be zero. So this gives us a nice system of equations. It's gonna be so nice, you'll see in a little bit why. But this is a cubic system and it's homogeneous. But not only that, it's also very, very homogeneous, like doubly homogeneous, okay? I'll tell you what, it, what I'm talking about in a little bit. Now, if you focus on the second equation, it's equal to zero. That's beautiful, right? If it wasn't, then we would have to use some type of transformation, 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 change of variables, like maybe b equals k times a, something like that, makes sense? But we don't need to do that because it's already given, sort of. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna factor out a b here. That's gonna give us a three a squared minus b squared. Awesome, and this equal to zero. Having zero is beautiful because now then we can use zero product property, which means either b is zero or this is zero. b equals zero gives you something interesting because if you plug it into the first equation, you get a cubed equals one. So if b is equal to zero from this, right, I get a cubed equals one, and remember, a is a real number, right? A and B, when you write a complex number in the form of A plus B I, A and B are supposed to be real. I mean, you could also write something like Z plus W I, where Z and W are not real, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about something 
real. Really, I mean, A and B are real. So from here, A equals 1. Great. So what does that give you? B equals 0, A equals 1. And we were talking about A plus B, I. That means 1. So 1 cubed is equal to 1. Is that for real? Yes, absolutely, of course. If you cube 1, you get 1, right? So that's one of the solutions. 1 is a solution. But what, what about the other ones? They are going to come from here. Let's go ahead and find out. We get 3a squared minus b squared equals 0, which implies b squared is equal to 3a squared. Great. We do need another equation, right? Otherwise, this is going to give us infinitely many. But guess what? The first equation is right there. Let's go ahead and bring it in. a cubed minus 3ab squared is equal to 1. And we do know that b squared is equal to 3a squared. So what else can you do? There is no better way to do it than plugging it in directly because, see, it's ready, ready to go. So let's go ahead and plug it in, a cubed minus 3a times b squared, which is 3a squared, equals 1. This is a cubed minus 9a cubed, which is negative 8a cubed, equals 1. Uh-oh, are we getting real solutions? Of course, because it's a cube, come on. a cubed is equal to negative 1 over 8. And then from here, we get a equals negative 1 half. Again, for the same reason, a is real, b is real. Therefore, we're only going to find one solution because complex numbers have three cube roots. Oops, did I say that? Anyways, you get the idea. This is for b equals 0. No, b equals 0, a equals 1. This is for the second one. But wait a minute. We only found a values. We didn't find the b values. Don't worry. We're going to plug it in. What do we have? We have b squared equals 3a squared. So b squared is 3 times a squared, which is 1 fourth. So b squared is 3 fourths. Uh oh, we get two solutions. Let's go ahead and write both. One of them is root 3 over 2, and the other one is the opposite because there are two real numbers whose square equals 3 fourths. You know that, right? There are two square roots. Well, kind of like the positive square root and the negative square root. I shouldn't say because the principal one is for reals, the positive one. Anyway, so this gives us two more solutions. And remember, a plus b i is a solution, so it's going to be negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2 i. And the other one is going to be negative 1 half minus root 3 over 2 i. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about the second method, because the second method is just awesome. But I think the first method is awesome too, but you're going to get to decide, okay? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. So, remember, a lot of times when we have an equation like z, z bar, absolute value, whatever, we try to replace z with a plus b i. Today, we're going to do the opposite. Why? because it's fun. I'm going to replace a plus bi with z. You'll see why this is helpful. z cubed equals 1. Wow, we're looking at the cube roots of 1. Awesome. In other words, the cube roots of unity. But 1 can be written as e to the power 2 pi and i. Awesome. If we divide both sides by 3, I mean the powers, we get 2 pi and i divided by 3. Now, we're going to get three z values. If n is equal to 0, we're going to get z equals 1. If n is equal to 1, we're going to get z equals e to the power 2 pi i over 3. If n is equal to 2, we're going to get z equals e to the power 4 pi i over 3. And when you expand these, expand these using Euler's formula, you're going to get all the solutions that we found earlier, including one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.